A few weeks ago on 60 Minutes, you met two men who worked quietly behind the scenes to persuade the government to pay more attention to people with AIDS. Tonight, meet three people who do much the same thing anyway, but quietly. They're members of a group called ACT UP, and they'll do anything they can to pressure anyone they think can help in the fight against AIDS. They don't care who he is. The next thing I know, one of these ACT UP groups is out saying, Bush ought to change his behavior. You can't talk about it rationally. They, the extremes are hurting the AIDS cause. You might not like the extremes they go to, but they couldn't care less. They're angry and they're dying, and there's no cure in sight. I'm HIV positive. I'm willing to do anything I can to save my life and the lives of my friends. We're hitting a Japanese pharmaceutical company in Fort Lee, New Jersey tomorrow morning. Peter Staley is 31, single, and a former Wall Street bond dealer. He and ACT UP are planning to shut down Daiichi, a Japanese drug company. The night before, Staley alerts the media. And we hope you can get a photographer there. Yeah. Follow me. ACT UP is picking on Daiichi because some researchers have told them the company is dragging its feet developing a new AIDS drug. Daiichi says the researchers do not have good information that the company is developing this drug as rapidly as it can. Okay. Hi, I'm with ACT UP, and we're doing an act of civil disobedience. Would you please remain calm? Tell me. But you gotta, can you get in any further? Okay. And keep Jim, off. it's Peter, we're in. Send all the press. Five news organizations show up. Then it's showtime. Hands, and those of us like me who have Kaposi sarcoma are gonna die because of your stupid and piggish policies, and we are here until we get arrested. So have a good day. This is Bob Rafsky, a 47-year-old divorced Harvard grad who has AIDS. The stuff on my face is Kaposi sarcoma, which is an AIDS-related cancer. There are drugs that will only attack the cancer cells for Kaposi sarcoma, and they're being developed too slowly, and Daiichi has the best one. But, but that drug has not proven to be effective. It, it looks very good in animals. It looks very good in the test tube. I'm ready, willing, and able to take that dr drug on an experimental basis, but they won't give it to me. Look, I'm not a scientist. I'm not located in Japan, okay? I know that there's a lot of work going on there. And I know that we're going to meet with the FDA as soon as we can. See this dark mark on my forehead? That's Kaposi sarcoma. It's going to spread. It's going to kill me. You're coming to my funeral because you're the man f***ing responsible. You are my murderer in your shirt and tie. The Daiichi official you called a murderer. Right. What gives you the right to do that? He's going to stay where he is with power over my life and do nothing and go home every day and eat dinner and think he's a fine human being. I'm going to call him a murderer, and I do have the right. But isn't he doing what his job calls for? following the process of approval. I mean, there's steps that have to be taken. The problem is that if everybody does business as usual, goes through all the regular routine processes of their day-to-day -day life, we will all die. Ravsky knows he's running out of time. His immune system is gone. So every afternoon, he walks Sarah, his seven-year-old daughter, home from school. Until 1985, Rasky was living the American dream. He was a successful public relations executive. Then he faced the fact he was gay. He divorced his wife and came out of the closet. You were infected in 1987? Uh, yes. You're an intelligent man. Correct. Information uh, about AIDS was available back then in 1987. Also correct. If anyone should have known how to avoid this virus, it was you. I agree with you. I came out at age 40. Uh, it was very bad timing to come out in the middle of an epidemic. But by age 40, it had been drummed into me year after year after year that homosexuality was a thing to be, shamed, to be sh ashamed of and possibly to be punished for. And that may have had something to do with my behavior. Do you assume responsibility for your infection? Yes, I do. The question is, what does a decent society do with people who hurt themselves because they're human, mm -hmm. who smoke too much, who eat too much, who drive carelessly, who don't have safe sex? And the answer? I think the answer is that a decent society does not put people out to pasture and let them die because they've done a human thing. Ravsky refuses to be ignored by politicians. During the Democratic primaries, he disrupted a Clinton speech. Dying in the state. What are you going to do about AIDS? 
Ramsky also went with ACT UP to Washington to protest what he calls President Bush's lack of AIDS leadership. George Bush has been sitting in the White House the entire time we've been dying, 11 years. Now... Ramsky and others chained themselves to the White House fence, calling on the government to research an AIDS cure the way it developed the atom bomb with the Manhattan Project. President Bush counters that AIDS research gets more money than cancer or heart disease. To compare us against cancer and pit us against other victims of other diseases is a sorry, sorry argument. Ramsky says what's also sorry is the abuse gay men face over AIDS. A park policeman tells Ramsky he's getting what he deserves for being gay. This man just said if I stop taking it in the ass that I wouldn't have AIDS. That's his ignorance. This man right here. Get rid of this homophobic ignorant. What you know about AIDS is why we're dying. Is there ever a, a temptation to just not fight, just to go gently? No. I do not want to go gentle into that good night. I want to fight to the last possible moment. It gives me a reason for living. Doctor's office. Hi, it's Peter Staley. For Peter Staley, this is the moment he fears most, when he calls the lab to get the T-cell count of his blood. It tells him how strong his immune system is. Peter? Yep. The blood count is OK. No change in T-cells. The beta 2 is normal. Good news. Okay. Thank you. Why is that good news? It, as long as I'm at a safe level with my immune system, which it is right now, um, and I can stay there, I'm happy. On the outside, Staley's been ACT UP's guerrilla leader, always getting arrested. But behind the scenes, he says ACT UP has made experimental drugs available faster, forced companies to cut prices, and pressured the government into consulting people with AIDS about its research. What's more important these days, the demonstrations or the work that you're doing behind the scenes? It is the fear of a demonstration that gets us through the door. Astra, a Swedish drug company with offices outside Boston, is Peter Staley's next target. Did you tell the company that you would ruin their public image if they didn't lower the price of the drug? Yes, we did. We're not going to beat around the bush. We asked them, we sat down with them, we argued with them, trying to get that price down. Do you want these drug companies to be afraid of you? It helps. All right. Would you resort to violence? I would resort to violence at the drop of a hat if I thought it would help. ACT UP pulls in front of Astra in rented trucks, blocking employees from driving to work and pushing their demands that the company lower the price of a drug that can prevent blindness in AIDS patients. The company says it's charging so much because it needs to recover $100 million in research costs. Under these trucks, ACT UP protesters are chained so the truck can't be moved. Does doing this make it any easier for you? Yes, it does. Astra is trying to make a killing off of this epidemic. This is no longer a drug company. This is a foreign-owned criminal enterprise attempting to make a killing off of my life. How long are you prepared to stay under here, handcuffed to this axle? Until I uh, feel that I'm going to lose a finger or two. What's that? You in charge here? Yes, sir. Yeah. You're under arrest. The police move in, first arresting ringleader Staley. We call the shots here. You're going to break my okay. arm in a minute, buddy. And then, break my arm. then the police chief gives the order to move the truck slowly, even though the protesters are lying underneath. Act up members cave in, coming out from under the trucks, and they are arrested. Some of their fellow activists complain that these 60s-like tactics are passe. We may be passe, but the price of the drug we were protesting under those trucks is coming down. If that's passe, I'll stay passe until I die. Marina Alvarez has never been arrested in an ACT UP demonstration. Never. She's a different kind of activist. She's a 40-year-old mother with two young sons who's been HIV positive for seven years. She says she doesn't know how she got infected with the virus. These days, when she goes to jail at Rikers Island, it's to educate for ACT UP, 
not to serve time. She knows these inmates because she was behind bars when she found out she had the virus. She was a drug addict doing time for passing bad checks. After five years drug free, she's back to teach. There are things that you should look for when you look for a condom, and that's that it be latex. Latex, meaning the rubber on it, you should read on the label that it says latex condom, also that it's lubricated. We got to get our act together. And we got to do something for ourselves now, because if we're going to sit around and wait for a cure, a lot of us are going to die. A lot of us are going to die. And that's my message to you guys today. You said you're not sure how you were infected. You were married at the time? Yes. Could it have been your husband? Possibly, yeah. Has he been tested? No, he hasn't. He doesn't want to get tested. He um, says that he doesn't care to know. He knows that you are positive, and he doesn't want to know? No. And Marina says her ex-husband isn't unusual. Few people in her Bronx neighborhood want to face the reality of AIDS. So she goes to places like laundromats, where people have time to listen. She goes armed with pamphlets in Spanish, condoms for teenage girls, and blunt talk to a woman who doesn't know how the virus is spread. There hasn't been that one known case that anybody drank behind somebody in a water fountain and got it. Okay. You know, that, that hasn't... Okay. Alvarez also visits women with AIDS who are all alone in public hospitals. Are you afraid at all? There's fear of... Um maybe what I'll go through or how it will be for me. I've seen it so different for so many other people. And yeah, I'm afraid. Do you think that you'll live to see a cure? No, I don't. Do you think that you'll live to see a cure? No. No. You expect to die from this. There's really nobody else uh, out there fighting the epidemic in the way that we are. Peter Staley recently got a drug company to donate a million dollars for AIDS research. Marina Alvarez spoke at the International Conference on AIDS. And Bob Ratsky is starting to write a book. He says it's for his daughter Sarah so she'll know what her father did to fight AIDS. Happy One, three, one, two, three.